All right, I think um, we should be ready to start. Thank you everybody so much for joining us today. Um, I'm really excited about today's webinar. Um, as you can see, we have a special guest, Tom Flanagan here. Um, I will let him introduce himself in a second. Uh, before I hand it over to him, if you guys have any question at all, uh, questions at all during this presentation, if you wouldn't mind putting them in the Q&A, please, so that I can monitor those and feed them to Tom, um, that'd be greatly appreciated. We are very open to receiving questions, so please ask them. Um, and again, very excited about today's webinar. Tom, thank you so much for being here today. I don't know if you want to give yourself a little intro so everyone can know who you are. Yeah, thank you, Devin. I'm happy to be here. So as Devin mentioned, I'm Tom Flanagan. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer at the group in Fort Collins, Colorado, home to Ninja Selling. So if you have it, if we have any ninjas in the audience or anybody who's taken Ninja Selling, yeah, please uh, throw that in the chat. Let Devin and I know. I'd always love to hear from ninjas across uh, the United States. And so I oversee marketing technology and relocation at the group. And so um, the title of this presentation is Who Says Email is Dead? And as I mentioned, I'm the chief innovation officer at the group, but I am also an author. And so one of the things that I love to do is take things that I learn in the digital marketing space for marketing my books and um, you know, just sort of in the author world, in the writing world, I love taking things I learn and applying it to the real estate industry and uh, my job at the group. And so I learn a tremendous amount in that space and I love applying it to real estate. And so I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I've learned um, in the last couple of years and how I apply them to real estate. And so first and foremost, I just had a new book that came out. It's called Acapulco. And it's sort of a cross between Stranger Things meets the Goonies with a little bit of Dazed and Confused sprinkled in. And what I learned was in my last book, that is that social media um, wasn't very successful in marketing the book. And so I needed a new sort of avenue for this new book that just came out. And so um, I sort of really focused my attention on email marketing. And I wanna share with you some of my findings. If you wanna learn more about how I sort of um, integrate all of this st stuff and see it in action, you can go to my website. It's just tfland.com, that's T-F-L-A-N.com. Um, you can see right on the homepage that my big call to action is subscribe. And my goal is to build an email list and communicate with my audience. And so one of the first things that I learned in this journey is uh, you own your email list. You do not own your social media following followers. And so I want to repeat that again, because it's really really critical. And I think a lot of people in the space need to realize this. You own your email list, not your social media following. And so you can't depend on social media platforms, algorithms, and the monetization of the web. We all know that massive platforms Forms like Facebook are always changing. They're always tweaking their algorithm, their news feeds, their advertising platforms. If you do a lot of social media advertising at your real estate brokerages, you know that's always changing. Facebook particularly is always changing their guidelines to align with things like fair housing. They're always tweaking, you know, the, the geo radius, um, you know, demographics list, all of those things. And um, you really can't depend on those platforms. And so why an email list? A lot of people think um, email is dead. And I would argue um, that it's actually quite the opposite. It's really a tried and true practice that is just thriving to this day in 2021. And so a couple of things that when I think of email, first and foremost, I think email is personal. It's much, it's a much more friendly medium than blogging or even social media. You know, you don't really have email trolls, for example. You certainly have spam and some other things, but I think we know how polarizing and, and even in some instances, how toxic social media can be or has become. And so I just look at email as a much friendlier medium. Um, email is also an asset. And so I think this is also sort of important to mention too with platforms like Twitter 
or Facebook or other channels, you have to go through the middleman to access your audience. Um, you're using their platform, their software, their tools, their features to communicate and connect with your audience. Um, but with email, your message is delivered straight to your readers and you don't need anybody's permission to do so. But if you have an opt-in mail list and people have um, willingly joined and signed up to communicate with you. You don't need anybody's permission. You can send direct messages um, directly to your audience. And um, that's really special. Um, email is, all, all, is, all, is also really private. And so this is just a, a quote by Jeff Goins. Jeff Goins, if you're not familiar with him, uh, check out his stuff. He is a really successful writer, digital marketer, podcaster. And um, he's also a big supporter of email. But he had this quote that I want to share with you. When you start the conversation in someone's inbox, they feel like they can be themselves and share whatever they may be struggling with, what they want or questions they have. They love the rapport that builds. Uh, I love the rapport that builds that this builds with readers. And so, again, just summarizing um, sort of how personal and private email can be. And so um, I thought this was a really fascinating um, fact from Litmus, and I'll chat about Lit Litmus a little further in the pre presentation. For every dollar a brand invests in email marketing, they receive $42 in return. And so in the writing world, there's this mentality that social media does not sell books and email does. And that's applicable to many products. It's applicable to things like uh, clothing and shoes and sneakers. And so, uh, you know, anybody who's any purchased something from Amazon or Zappos, um, you signed up to be notified all of that transaction uh, data, you know, from, from making a purchase on an e-commerce website um, to tracking the shipping, to receiving the package, to leaving feedback, that entire journey is, uh, you know, happening via email, not something like social media. Um, so I think, you know, uh, brands that invest in email really see the return on investment. And I just want to share with you some statistics uh, with you as well. And so this, these are some stats with email marketing versus social media. And so if you look at these numbers, um, which come from Optin Monster, which is a big uh, platform in the digital space, um, you know, you can look at total users, they're pretty comparable, right? You have 3.8 billion users that use Vmail, 3.4 now with social media. So pretty even there, but things change pretty dramatically when you look at things like promotion. Um, so prefer preferred channel for promotion, 60% email, only 20% on social media. And then obviously this is significant conversion rate uh, across the board. Email is slightly over 6% for conversion rate and social media is under two. And with email, you can expect an open click-through engagement rate um, to be, um, you know, in terms of open, almost 23% and click-through rate of almost 4%. And with social media, that's 0 0.58. And again, the return on investment is uh, 44, you know, 4,400% with email marketing. And obviously, that's very difficult to measure and accurately track with social media. Looking at some additional um, statistics, if we look at email marketing versus just specifically Facebook, an average email open rate, again, as I mentioned, 15 to 25% with email, um, 2.5 for click-throughs. Um, the average click to open rate should be universally 20 to 30%. And if you look conversely at Facebook, what you can expect for that click-through rate is 0.07%. And so obviously that engagement has changed um, dramatically. Um, email has far, far superior engagement rates compared to Facebook, particularly when Facebook makes algorithm changes to make their users more engaged and give their users slightly more control over advertising and things of that nature. And so, um, you know, just some really fantastic data on email. 
Um, so three tools. So throughout this process of um, me learning about the writing space and being an author and taking those practices to my real estate brokerage here at the group. I just want to sort of mention three tools. Uh, MailChimp is one that I have used, um, which is great. They have a great free offering. Um, you know, I, I could really see MailChimp being valuable to an independent um, real estate agent, maybe less so for a real estate brokerage. ConvertKit, if you're not familiar with ConvertKit, they have a lot of great features. They have a lot of cool things like landing pages and lead magnets and the ability to send email marketing. They really sort of focus on the creative space. So thing, people like musicians and artists and writers. And I will say that in my experience, um, great platform, but their free offerings um, are, are much more limited than MailChimp. Um, and again, they sort of cater to that creative space, uh, but certainly a nice platform nonetheless. And then there's ActivePipe. And so at the group, we use ActivePipe. We use it every single day. We love it. What I love about ActivePipe is that it's sort of, it's like MailChimp. It offers all the features of MailChimp. But then, of course, it integrates a whole slew of other robust features, including properties. And so, gosh, 10, 15 years ago in the real estate industry, it was actually very difficult to use a platform like uh, constant contact or MailChimp and integrate properties in there, particularly if you were a real estate broker and you had no experience with HTML or design or layouts, that's very time consuming. And for our brokers here at the group, the ability to create a newsletter um, that has featured properties or a digest of open houses or coming soon listings. Um, it is just so easy to integrate MLS data or listing data. It's all widget based. So you can literally drag and drop featured properties into the email. We have brokers here as a group, top producing uh, brokers that produce um, beautiful email pieces in 30 seconds, 60 seconds, like just beautifully professionally designed email in a matter of minutes. And I'm not exaggerating, really super easy to use. Um, we actually even had one of our rookies. Um, this is Dalton. He works at the organization and he actually got his first listing from an email campaign. This is published on the active Pipe website, so you could certainly um, go to their case studies on their website and read this entire case studies. And for any of the ninjas or anybody on this webinar who's familiar with ninja selling at the group, we actually have something that's called auto flow. And it's basically uh, staying in flow with your clients. And there's these weekly, monthly touches that we do with our buyers and sellers. And email is a cornerstone of that flow program that we built internally that a lot of other ninjas throughout the United States have. And so we send a couple of monthly newsletters out that we use active pipe and um, some other um, uh, communications as well. And so just a wonderful opportunity to, um, to provide touches for your clients to stay in flow to communicate with them on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, whatever the case may be. And so Dalton is a big fan and continues to use active play to this day. And again, if you wanna learn more about that case study, um, you certainly can. You can just visit the active play website and look at their case studies. So I also wanna provide um, some tips and um, three tips that I like to include in my email marketing. And so from in my writing world, I send out one email a week. It's just a weekly uh, newsletter that I send to my audience and sort of, um, you know, I sort of began this journey with trial and error and sort of documented what worked and what didn't. And so I want to share some of those tips with you. And so the first tip that I'd like to share is a lead magnet. If you're not familiar with a lead magnet, it's essentially a call to action on your website where you're exchange, exchanging some sort of, um, you know, um, tangible item. It could like a free item, like a, a white paper, a guide, whatever the case may be. So I mentioned earlier in the presentation that Jeff Goins, who's that uh, really successful 
successful digital mar digital marketer in that space. Um, this is a screenshot from his website. So you can see he has a call to action to say, get my free guide. When you click that button, um, he says, give me your email address and I will send you that guide. So that's what a lead magnet is. It's creating a call to action on your website where you are going to share some sort of valuable piece of content to your audience member in exchange for their email address. And it's completely opt-in and it's a great way to build your email list. And so just a couple of tips and ideas um, that maybe could be a catalyst for you um, creating a lead magnet. Um, so buyer and seller guides, obviously super important for your communities. So for example, you could create um, buyers and sellers guides with market data, um, other value propositions for your client. Also great if you have relocation departments as well, or you're in a location that uh, facilitates a lot of relocation. Super helpful for buyers and sellers. Um, another guide sort of in, in that sort of relocation space is moving to Fort Collins. Um, Fort Collins, Colorado is a university town. We have CSU, Colorado State University, right downtown. And we have a huge influx of students um, every semester, every year. Um, and so um, a lot of a great opportunity there is to build a moving to Fort Collins guide. Obviously that's applicable to any community in the United States and I see a lot of traction in these things. Uh, net sheets as well, um, you know, a super valuable document that you could uh, create for your sellers and uh, potential sellers or potential listings. And so another idea, ebook as well. And so the founder of the group here in Fort Collins, Colorado is Larry Kendall. He has a very successful book called Ninja Selling. And so if you have the resources, talent, and bandwidth at your organization, um, an ebook, it could be small, short, long, whatever the case may be. Another great idea for a lead mag magnet and things I've sort of tested. Planner or checklist, uh, both on the buying or selling side can be um, advantageous as well. So generally, these are just a handful of ideas, but the general premise being create something of value, put it on your website, create a lead magnet to capture email addresses. When somebody signs up for that, they immediately sent um, that uh, piece of content. And so um, all of the applications that I've mentioned, whether it be ActivePipe, whether it be MailChimp, uh, lead, um, you know, convert kit, other platforms in that space make it super easy to create, right? You know, somebody joins up, you create a welcome message, it can include a link to the download or attachment, whatever the case may be. So the tech learning curve here is super easy and, you know, um, super easy to facilitate. And so these platforms make it really easy to execute. So a couple of uh, other things I want to mention, Litmus, I mentioned this earlier today for those on the webinar that are not familiar with Litmus, it is a really robust email platform that helps you with a bunch of things focused on test and measure. And so what they allow you to do is A-B testing. So you could create um, you know, two pieces of email um, that's sort of the same premise, um, but just laid out differently, maybe a couple of different call to actions, different links, and then you get to test and see which one performs better. And so uh, you can't do that with social media, right? You make a, a post on Facebook and you can certainly look at the likes and, you know, the comments, but then you know, you can't simultaneously run A-B a, B testing with social media. Certainly you could go on Twitter and, 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 you know, fire off two different tweets about the same topic and look at the engagement, but it's not true A-B testing, which you can do in email, which is fantastic. Litmus also lets you do pre-send testing. It gives you robust insights and analytics in this platform integrations as well. Because it's a test and measurement platform, Litmus um, can be integrated with other popular um, mail platforms as well. And education, um, if you have no interest in Litmus, but you want to sort of educate yourself on some of the best practices with emails, uh, with email delivery and those types of uh, workflows, 
uh, sign up for the litmus blog it's free they have a lot of great information and um, i do that myself they have some great blog posts and they're really on top of things with like um, mail platform changes, you know, things like if Office 365 or G Suite come up with new features that, that are going to that are going to impact um, successful mail delivery. They really do a lot of great information based articles on those types of things, things like desktop versus mobile, some really great information. I find it helpful. Um, at the very least, check out their blog. It can be very educational. And again, Active Pipe also does a lot of these, um, these has a lot of these features baked in as well. Another thing that I wanna um, mention that it's really actually critical in, in my opinion is uh, subject lines. And email subject lines really matter. And I think it's something that a lot of people don't think of. And it really is a craft, it's an art form to um, come up with um, email subject lines. And you know, think about your everyday life. I'm sure you wake up in the morning, you launch Gmail, you probably, if you're anything like me, you have 75 new emails and you peruse the subject lines, you go right through. And if it's a poorly written subject line, you're just going check, 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 delete. And um, you know, you probably stop at some subject line that catches your attention. Or maybe you want to read it later, or you're not going to delete it. And so, in my opinion, crafting a you know thoughtful subject line is going to prevent that behavior of just opening and opening up Gmail, literally selecting 20 e emails and hitting delete. And so, um, just some tips on email subject lines. Uh, make it personal. Um, can't emphasize this enough. Be really thoughtful. Make your email subject lines personal, even if they're just, um, even if you're using email to promote new properties, coming soon listings, things of that nature. Make it engaging. Make it personal. Use a familiar sender name. So don't use a Rolodex name, uh, email address or name. So for example, um, if you're like me, and, and I'm, I'm sure you are, you know, you probably don't want to get look at emails from info at domain name dot com. You know, um, you know, use your name in there. If you're if you're communicating with your audience, use your name as the sender name. Um, and I think just, you know, that's just a proving tech technique uh, for better engagement. Don't use all caps. You know, you'd be surprised still in 2021. I still receive emails, all caps. I always feel like somebody's yelling at me. Nobody likes to be yelled at. So uh, don't use caps. And obviously now that email supports emojis, use them sparingly. Um, you know, it's always sort of fun or you know quirky to include an emoji an emoji in in a subject line or even in, in the body of the email but you know i've seen them where you know when i if you have you know 15 to 20 emojis um in a subject line that just looks silly to me so uh, they can really be engaging and and even humorous uh, but use them sparingly and thoughtful thoughtfully another and one we see question. tom is um, yeah. a lot of exclamation points. D don't ever use more than one exclamation point. Absolutely, thank you. I, I I should have included that. Yeah. So if you have all caps and exclamation points, oh boy, that I mean that just feels <laughs> like somebody is. <laughs> you feel like you're in the principal's office, just being scolded and yelled at. Yelled at. So yeah, absolutely. I'm a I'm, I'm really bad at reminding myself to delete my exclamation points. I'm just a very enthusiastic person. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just be mindful of all caps and explanation points. That's great feedback. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And ask an interesting question. Um, people like to chat, people like to communicate. And what do I mean by that? Here's an example of an email that I sent earlier in the year, uh, back in May just a good example. And so in a lot of my books, um, music is always sort of a, um, you know, a popular piece, you know, I, I'm a big music fan. And so uh, my, my, my latest book takes place in 1988. And so music's just a wonderful opportunity to sort, to sort of set the tone, set um, the place and time, you know, and so 
um, I sent out an email um, and I said, hey, do me a favor, hit reply to this email. Let me know what you're listening to. Feel free to send me a playlist from your favorite, favorite streaming service, a YouTube link, whatever your preference is. I'd actually love to hear what you're listening to. And my engagement rate for this email was just off the charts. You know, I had like a 92% open rate. I can't believe how many people responded back to what they were listening to. I have a very diverse audience. So it was so great to just uh, learn about people's favorite bands, favorite musicians, what they were listening to. And I just got so many different playlists and so many different bands. I actually compiled the lists of them and shared them with my audience. Um, so really, so that, that's sort of community building, right? And so just asking a question, hey, do me a favor, let me know what you're thinking, or um, asking the, the question in the subject line. Uh, people love to communicate. Uh, people love to tell you about themselves and what they're doing. And so um, ask the question, don't be afraid, put it right in the subject line. I do that all the time as well in the subject line. In this example, I don't have a question, but I do that all the time. And when you ask somebody a question, your audience, um, most in most cases, they're gonna answer that question, reply back and, uh, and engage with you, which I think is super cool. Um, so just some examples. Um, for uh, some tips on subject lines. And I'm really hoping this can be sort of a catalyst and maybe, um, you know, sort of spark a few ideas um, for you and your subject lines, whether it's real estate related or otherwise. Um, so first and foremost, be direct. You know, for example, if your audience was uh, real estate uh, professionals, maybe in the marketing or technology, space in real estate, how to write better remarks in half the time. Oh, I'm sorry if you're, if you're a real estate agent too, writing your own property descriptions. So if you had an email um, that was a tutorial or some sort of lesson that was teaching people how to write better property descriptions, uh, this is a perfect example. Subject line, how to write better property remarks in half the time. I mean, that's something I would open up and read myself. Ask a question. As I just mentioned, this one actually came legitimately from Zillow. Uh, they did a great job here. Uh, this goes out to consumers. What can you afford, right? That is, people would love to know what they can afford. And that's a great subject line, crafted extremely well. That one's from Zillow. Um, again, pique their curiosity. Here's an example. Ben, interesting to tell you all about these new listings. You know, somebody reads that and they're like, Ooh, I'm interested in learning what these new listings are, these new coming soon listings. Maybe something that hasn't been published on the MLS or uh, I should actually say Zillow or other brokerage websites. And so again, pique their curiosity. Uh, this one's sort of fun, TV or movie characters. So I always get a kick out of these sort of techniques. The George Costanza method of buying a home. You know, people love that type of things. And people also love top five or top three or top 10 uh, lists. So numerology, 10, 10 things to do in Fort Collins. You know, people love that. 10 things to do in Austin, Texas. 10 things to do in San Francisco. 10 things to do in Boston. So um, people love that. So I hope... Uh, some of these ideas could be a catalyst for some, um, you know, some new email creation for you. And that's all I have. So I hope um, some of those uh, tips and practices that I've sort of incorporated, um, I hope you found it valuable. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions somebody might have. This was awesome, Tom. I was especially excited about some of the stats that you shared. I would love if you maybe you could go back to that screen just to glance that one over again, because um, that was definitely new information to me in the business. So pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm happy to run through them again. One of the things that's really interesting that's not included in this presentation is I read this case study with Gary V, who, you know, is typically, you know, he has just such a massive social media following. And, um, you know, he is sort of the, I've read a case study on his books and looking at how he has millions of followers on, on all these social media platforms and those social media followings really contributed very little to his book sales. And so just to go over them again, this is email marketing versus social media. Again, we all know that Facebook 
has a massive audience today and social media is really caught up to email in terms of users. So 3.8 billion email users today, 3.4 billion social media users today. But I think what's really significant here is when you start to look at conversion rates and engagement and with email, it's just far superior across the board. And so, um, and if we look specifically at uh, Facebook, um, if you look at um, across the board with email, the average email open rate is anywhere between 15 and 25%. By the way, I can share with you at the group here using ActivePipe, our open rates are just so incredible. Um, this would be a low end um, for open rates here at the group using ActivePipe. Um, again, it's our brokers are sending direct communications via ActivePipe to their clients. So it's all opt-in and um, our just open rates are just incredible. And so that makes me really happy. But if you look at some of this, the, the average open rate should be around 20 to 30 percent. But conversely, if you look at metrics with Facebook, um, you can expect less than one percent or specifically 0.07 percent. And so, again, Facebook, Twitter and all the other popular social media platforms, including Instagram, are algorithm based and their algorithms are meant to um, you know, engage their users um, and not necessarily advertisers. And let's be honest, a lot of people don't go to those outlets for advertising. And so email can just be so profound and so su successful. And, you know, I, I, I encourage everybody to ask themselves if you're making an e-commerce, you know, purchase or you've gone out and specifically signed up for a brand or some sort of platform for notifications, you look forward to those emails. All of those purchases, um, you know, uh, uh, facilitated through email. And so email has been one of the best opportunities for me to sell my books. And um, I know selling houses is obviously different, but uh, using email to market homes directly to your clients um, is a great buyer's tool. It's a great listing tool. And um, yeah, the, the analytics for email versus social media have just been uh, just significant. Yeah, that's, that's so interesting because I always hear agents coming um, to us, you know, wanting to be use the emails that they created to get on social media. Um, so it's just interesting to actually see the stats behind it. One thing that I could for sure see people using, at least on the active pipe side, um, to their advantage is our new sign up page that we have. Um, that is, of course, if they're not using a CRM, but we have that sign up page that you can just link onto Facebook so that you're having contacts directly added into your email list, um, which is a great way to use both sources to your advantage. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned that, too, because I just want to say um, I also use social media. So, I mean, obviously, social media can polarizing people have different thoughts about it. You know, there's certainly privacy concerns and other things. But I will say I'm not um, I'm not recommending that you stop uh, doing social media and that you delete all your accounts. That's certainly up to you. Um, I just I think you need you need to sort of leverage all of these digital marketing tools in 2021. My primary yeah. focus is my email list, but of course I I'm also on Facebook and Twitter as well. Um, I don't see the engagement or the success on those platforms, but that doesn't mean I um, I don't participate in them. I do. Mm -hmm. However, really my thoughtful energy will go into crafting uh, the content from my email list. Okay, one question for you, and I'm surprised we don't have too many questions from the audience, but about how long does it take you to create an email? Well, it depends on what they are. So in, in my writing world, um, you know, I do one email um, update a week for my newsletter. If anybody's interested in seeing what that looks like, you can just go to my website and, and subscribe. Um, you know, I would say I try to be more thoughtful and engaging and, um, you know, and many times I'll share some photos, a video, um, some other links as well. And so I would say, you know, something like that will take me, um, you know, a guesstimate would be an hour, no more than an hour, just from beginning to end, editing, adding the links, the media, all of that stuff. Um, so about an hour. However, if it's real estate related, at the group. Again, I don't want to, 
you know, sound gratuitous here, uh, but active pipe does make it really simple. So uh, again, um, sort of a newsletter in active pipe that may have a featured property, a link to a property video on YouTube, um, you know, some additional information. I have literally created them with uh, our brokers in minutes. Um, you know, wow. a, good, a good guesstimate would, would be five minutes, to be honest with you. Um, we had some agents that were using BombBomb, for example, and um, Active Flight makes it really easy just to drag a YouTube widget onto the um, layout and link to a YouTube video of you giving yourself a message. And so, um, yeah, yeah, you can create them. I'm not exaggerating. You can create a professionally looking newsletter in Active Pipe with properties in five minutes or so. And again, it's always based on how much content you want and how much you want to fine tune it, but it's just a matter of minutes. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, thanks for confirming that because that's what I tell my customer <laughs> that it's minutes. <laughs> Um, awesome. Well, we don't have too many questions or actually we don't have any questions. So you must have done a great job delivering Tom. Um, I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, I certainly learned a lot and hopefully our audience did as well. Um, and so, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. It was my pleasure. And if anybody um, wants to learn more, has a question offline, uh, feel free to contact me. Um, and I'm happy to follow up with any questions somebody might have. So thank you. I've had a lot of fun. And it's always great to chat about email marketing. I'm kind of a nerd, but kind of like it. So <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed it. I certainly did. And again, I can't wait to dig into your book and I'll give you my feedback hopefully soon. Oh, thank you. I'd love to hear what you think. Keep me posted. I will. All right. You have a great one. Thank you everybody again for joining us today and have a great day. Bye. Bye.